Okay, Steve Burns here, and um, okay, week one of the Intermediate Photoshop class. So I want to talk about layer blend modes. I think it's going to be really important um, in terms of um, your workflow in Photoshop. And I want to make sure everybody's watching me here. Okay, and I'm watching. So I'm working, I'm currently working with a single layer, and I need a layer to blend against it. Now, currently, you notice I'm in, in, in normal modes. My layer blend modes are right up here above your layer. Okay, normally, it, by default, it's going to be normal. I'm going to duplicate this layer. What's the shortcut? Control J. Yep, Control or Command J. All right, now, once I have the duplicated layer, I have an image to blend against right beneath it. Photoshop works in layers. So right up here where it says normal, I'm going to select it. Now watch what happens. Certain things start to happen. And I'm going to explain what's going on here. Okay. We're getting all these various effects because it's using pixel information to blend with the image underneath it. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to keep that one normal. I'm going to make a brand new layer. I'm going to create a black and white gradient. In Photoshop, we have a we, have, we optimally we work with 256 shades of gray. Okay? I'm going to hit the G key. That's going to take me to the gradient option. So if my what I prefer you guys to work with your toolbar where it's a double layer. Okay? All eyes up here, right? And I want to change the the foreground color to black and the bottom to white. I'm going to hit the D key. Foreground is now black. The background is now white. So I'm going to gradiate from absolute black to absolute white. I'll do so by starting from the left-hand side, holding the shift key, and drag it on over. So the shift key constrains it in one direction, by the way. And I'm making a black and white gradient. By 256 possible shades of gray. Now we're going to start to understand how and why Photoshop does what it does in terms of layer blend modes. <clears throat> if I come right up here where it says normal and drop this down, what do we see? We see various options divided by a dividing line. There's a reason for that. Your first set has all of these options, darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color, have one thing in common. All eyes up here. Have one thing in common. It maintains your darker values and forces your medium gray to brighter values to go transparent completely. So if we go to darken, it maintains the darker values in relationship to the layer underneath it. Your medium grays and your brighter values go transparent. If I go down to the next option, multiply, the same thing happens. Maintains the darker values, medium grays and brights go transparent. Now, notice that as I, <clears throat> the further I go down the list, the harsher it applies to darker values. Linear burn and darker color. Okay, so start from darker, it gets stronger, more aggressive by representing the darker values in relationship to the medium grays and brights. All right, so if this maintains my darker value, what do you think the next one's gonna, gonna maintain? Yeah, my brights. So if I go to lighten, you can see it in relationship to the layer underneath. The brighter values on that layer are maintained. Medium grays are gone, so I can see through it to the bottom, to the bottom layer underneath it. And the darker values are definitely gone. Means it means, it means those areas are going to go completely transparent. They're not represented. Okay. So next, screen, color dodge, linear dodge, same effect. This it, it applies it harsher as I go further down the list. Does that make sense? 
So the top values, the darkened values, maintain your shadows. The bottom ones maintain your highlights. The next one maintains your shadows and the highlights together, forcing your medium gray information to go transparent. So if I come to here, I'm going to overlay, and I'm going to turn off the layer before and after, before and after. Maintaining the darker values, medium grays go transparent, maintaining the brighter values. If I go down to the next one, soft light, which is a softer version of overlay, before and after, before and after. If I go next down to hard light, now you can see a much more obvious result here. Right? Maintains the darker values, medium grays go away in brighter values. Um, if I go down to vivid light, linear light, pin light, or hard mix, which is enigma onto itself. But um, you can you can see I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about the other ones just yet. I want you to understand how these three affects your values. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so if that is the case, let's go ahead and turn this off. And I can I can I can get these to blend with each other with itself. So here's my top layer turn on and off is in normal blend mode. So if I go over to darken, there's no effect. Why? Because you're viewing the tones naturally as you see them, and you're seeing through the 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 um, the medium grays and, and and brighter values down to the layer underneath. If I go down further, will it, will it accentuates the effect? Now it starts to blend the darker values, make it much more stronger. If I go even further down, linear burn, it goes even richer. Okay, so there's going to be some um, nice little, um, you know, techniques for for applying these um, in Photoshop. All right, so do me a favor. I like I, I like you guys to kind of like open up an image, and it doesn't have to be this one, just any image you want. And I want you to apply a gradient just so that you can see firsthand how this is actually being applied on your screen. Okay, so I set up a Google Drive for you guys, okay? Um, I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of that too. Okay, on Google Drive, I set up a special folder uh, called Dart 152 2019. And in this folder, I'm going to put all the class recordings. The class recordings will go inside this Word file. If for some reason you're going to miss class um, under the emergency homework folder here, um, if you, for, you're just sick or something, you're going to miss class, a death in the family, you can put your homework here. But just let me know that you're doing it so that I'm, I'm aware of it. If I double click on the, on the Word file folder, all right, there's your recordings. Now, today's recording is going to go into week one, but right here, here, let me kind of just zoom in closer. This is the direct URL to the drive, and this is the link to all the images folder. So right now, go to, go to your uh, web browser and type in this link into your web browser. That's going to connect this my drive to you automatically. So let's do that now. If you haven't done so already, do that now. Okay, so let's make, kind of do a little practical application of this. I'm going to open up this image here, and this is going to be blend modes number 30. Okay? And we've got stairs here. Now, the whole idea when we're doing image creation, is particularly with photography or basically anything uh, that you're going to use for brochures or um, that's going to use photographic application is you want to have detail everywhere. You want to have detail in your highlights, shadows, and midtones. And here the photographer took a photograph. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And if I get in closer, Control Plus, right, you can see that I have detail in these areas, but in the highlights there are none. Right? Well, let's see how much detail we've lost in there. Now, 
I'm going to apply what's called an adjustment layer. We talked about smart objects, right? Okay. We talked about smart objects in terms of I'm going to be I want to be able to maintain the detail if I decide to resize it. In this class? Okay. Did I not talk it? All right. I probably didn't. We did the walking tab the first day. Um, you're right. I'm thinking of another class. Yes. Okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. Let's talk about smart objects. If you've taken a beginning class, you're usually working directly on the layer, right? So you're working in a, in a destructive fashion. So let's understand it this way. I'm going to duplicate this one more time, Command-J, and I'm going to resize this. So the client wants this particular image much, much smaller to be placed in a brochure. So Command-T for free transform. I'm going to hold down the Alt key while I drag the corner. That resize it toward the center of the screen. And I'm going to make it very, very, very small and hit Enter. Oh, if the client says, you know what? I want to bring it back again. Command T. All right. Holding the Alt key again and bring it up. What's happened? It's lost. That's right. It's lost. It lost all its quality. That's right. Because it's not a smart object. Right. <laughs> so we want to work, especially when we're doing graphic design and even photography or photography related stuff or any type of um, art editing. We want to work with smart objects. So if I turn this one off and let's go down to this one, we're going to make this one a smart object. I'm going to right click on the right hand side. Right there. Convert to smart object. Click it. Now, see that little symbol in the bottom right hand corner? It's like a double folder symbol. It's basically telling you, this is now a smart object. Let's see what it can do. Command T, hold the Alt key. Now notice that little X right there in that window? That's your visual, visual designation that that's a smart object. Grab it, make it smaller, and hit Enter. All right, the client wants it bigger because clients never know what they want. So Command T, what's happened? It's original data. Yep, it maintained its original data. Let's 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 mess with it some more. Bring it down smaller, maybe like more medium size. Alt or Control for distort. Something like so. And hit enter. Now, what Photoshop is doing is this. In the standard layer here, you've destroyed the image that's on that layer. In a smart objects layer, you didn't. Now, how does that work? Well, here is one single image on here. On this one, there's multiple images. There's more than one image there. There's two. The one that you transformed and the original high quality one that's underneath it that is reading off of, rereading the pixels off of to repopulate your transformed image. Does that make sense? So how do I get to the high quality image? Watch. Double click on this layer right here on the icon. It opened it up. Right here it is, right in front of me. Where is the other one? Right there, the transformed one. Let me close this one out for now. If you change the original, will it change this layer? No, I'm getting there. Sorry. Window, arrange, windows, arrange, tile vertically. Okay, let's put this in the middle. So we can kind of see what's going on here. So the question that was just asked is, can I change one to affect the other? Yes. Okay. So here's the one that I transformed. Over here, watch when I click on the tab. It's the high quality one. So what if I want to change this one? 
let's see, make a brand new layer. And let's play with the color of this image. So how about if on this layer, I'm going to paint with, um, let's say, something kind of like a blue color. Hit the B key for the brush. Resize my brush bigger. I'm going to select the standard circular soft edge brush. I'm going to go grab something right up here, there. Okay. Standard soft edge brush. I've got, um, I, like, I like smoothing completely turned off. And I'm going to have opacity up to 100%. And I'm going to paint just over these areas, just over this little wall area here. And then if I paint, I'm getting an opaque image. The paint's covering it up. But if I go to give it another blend mode, like overlay, see, it's allowing that texture to come through. Right? If I don't want the texture on the on the foreground wall, I can hit the E key for the eraser, right? Or go to the eraser here, this E on the right hand side, and of course I can you know, erase that away. So now notice I'm inside the smart object. Now how do I make this change over here to the left? Very simple. Command or Control S. Boom. See it change? Go back to the other one here. Make a new layer. Let's come over here and Let's make the foreground color like a red. And on the new layer, start painting. I'm going to hit the B key, by the way. I'm going to start painting on the side. However, on that layer, I'm going to give it a different blend mode. Maybe something like, let's see. Let's see what works here. Maybe we'll go to color. Not saturation, but color. Yeah, saturation, saturation is going to be cool. All right. We're going to show you a more practical application. I just want to show you that you can edit inside the smart object non-destructively. I'm not touching the original layer. Now, if I wanted, I wanted to show up here, what do I do? Control S. Is that just saving? That's just saving your smart object. Once you save the smart object, you also have to save the document over here, the one you're working in. Go to your file, you know, com Command or Control S, or Command Shift S for Save As. All right. So now what you can do is you can resize your layers as many times as you want, and never affect the pixel quality. Does that make sense? Okay. So, all right. I tell you what. Let's play with that. Um, Go ahead, open up this particular image, which is called Blend Modes number 30, in the Blend in the Blend Modes folder. Oh, so go back to resume. Okay, here we go. Now, let's get rid of this one. I'm going to close out that smart object. I'm also going to delete that smart object layer, as well as that one. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. Um and what I'm going to do is use the blend mode to create detail in my highlights, utilizing the texture that I already have here in the wall. So I will duplicate this one last time. That's this, this is going to be my blending layer. And if I hit the V key and here's all my texture, I want to place it over the highlights, right? That's going to be my initial texture. The problem is, is I want to use a blend mode that's going to allow me to keep the texture and the highlights, but get rid of everything else. So if I target this here, see what's happening? These are brighter. These aren't going to work, but if I go to overlay or soft light or hard light, there. See hard light? Hard light looks good in here. So I'm going to target hard light, and I'm going to adjust the texture where this is going to work just nicely. It looks pretty darn good over these highlights here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a layer blend mode. 
I'm going to tell Photoshop that I want to place the texture utilizing my walking pen and my stylus. I want to place it where I want it to go. I don't want it to show up anywhere else. To do so, I'm going to give it a layer blend mode once again. Third icon from the left right down here. I'm going to click it. What it's done is it's placed in what's called a layer mask. All right. So I'm applying this. I'm going to apply this mask to this layer blend mode of hard light. So I think it's easier to paint the texture in than it is to paint all the other texture out. So what I will do is I will target the mask. Hit what's the shortcut for inverse? Control I. Control I. Select it. So the black means is blocking out all the visual aspects of the layers connected to. White means show show it to me. So what I can do is I can I can edit the mask by painting in the textures where I want it. So my foreground color has to be white. What's the shortcut for switching my foreground and background color? X. X. Now it's white. Now I want a brush to paint in the effects. What's the shortcut for the brush? B. Right, exactly. And I can resize my brush accordingly. Now I'll get in close. And I'll start to paint in my texture. And the reason it's not working is because multiply is being applied to the brush. That's going to not allow my effects to happen. So I'm going to go to normal up here. Now we paint it in. See? Very quickly. And it's okay you spill over a little bit because you're not really going to visually be able to, to see um, the effect. See? Go down to the next one. Space bar allows me to move. See how that's blending in there pretty well? Go to the next one. And then I can make the brush a little bigger if I want to in this case. See? See what's happening here? So this is a, a great example of using your layer blend modes. Uh, to blend this in. Now, if I'm spilling over too much over to the wall here, hit the X key and paint with black on the mask because I'm editing the mask. We're going to be using layer mask quite a bit through this whole class, and that takes it away, right? If I want this whole section to have more of that texture, X key, the paint with white, right? Yeah, we're getting some steps in there. Yeah, absolutely. Good call. Yep. I, I will need to move that a little bit. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> well, I could do this too. So how about this? How about if I just paint with, uh, you know, just get that all out? I can do this as well. I can duplicate my original layer again, bring it to the top. V key for the move tool, reposition this on top of that right there. It does. That's what you wanted to do. Why? I know, it does. Because we're going to do the same thing. We're going to paint in where we want it to go. Give it a layer mask. What's the shortcut? Inverse the mask. See, now it's gone. Now you decide as an artist where you want it to come back. B key, paint with white. See? And only that's being affected. Is that making sense? So now that takes on the stronger, darker nature of that wall. But notice that I'm painting with normal with that wall. I can do that if I want to. Right? I can also go back to using my 
hard light option where it blends it right on in. So play with that on this one. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to delete this one. Let's show you another little practical example. Um, I'm using Command or Control Shift O as a toggle between Bridge and Photoshop. And let's go get a landscape image real quick. Let's see. Maybe. I, I kind of like. Ooh, I love what's going on here. But let's use that one. This is a good one. All right. I'm going to double click it, open it up. So this is the blend mode number 22. I'm going to hit the F key to go to my full screen mode. So remember, F key from beginning class toggles between your different blend modes, not blend modes, your screen modes. And there we go. Now, what's wrong with this image? You guys talk to me. It's not sci-fi. No, it's not sci-fi. You don't have to always do sci-fi. But to well, it's tonally. Let's look at tonal range. What's wrong with it? Too dark in the middle, right? There's detail in there. By getting close, there's probably some detail way in there. Well, what was that? <laughs> and probably the ground could, could take on more, um, it could look more like dirt. All right, so if I take, let's duplicate this layer here. Um, if I use a blend mode that's going to brighten this up, what section would I be interested in? What's the, which which one? Darken, lighten? Well, darken makes things darker. Well, let's talk about the um, the doorway, the shade of this area in here. So, what what am I going to be interested in? The lighten area. So, lighten shows it as you see naturally. Screen. Oh, look, there's detail in there. Huh. Well, we go to color dodge. Well, that just that that's brightening up your brights real bright, but also it makes your darkest a little more darker. Linear dodge, and that kind of works kind of nicely too. So we go between linear dodge and screen. Yeah, linear dodge works kind of nice. I'm, I'm I'm gonna go with screen here. Is that the shadow in the bottom part of the door, or is that just like an awkward photo effect? Um, whereabouts in the bottom of the door? That's yeah, square. This square here? Yeah, no, no. Oh, this here. No, that's something inside. There's something inside there. There's detail inside there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a door. So it's um <clears throat> we've got a we've, <clears throat> we've got a lot of detail inside here. That um, because the camera was underexposed. Well, the, the, the interior is underexposed. You couldn't see it. So if I turn this off, this is what you saw. You turn it back on. Now we're bringing up detail. All right, let's uh, come in here and actually add the detail in there. So I'm going to give this one a layer mask. I want to apply this effect just to the door. What do I do? That's right. Yep, yep, that absolutely. But your mask is white now. Everything is it's applying the effects everywhere. All right. Well, let's inverse it first. How's that sound? Well, we could do that, but let's say command first, because what we really want to affect is the doorway and not everything else. That was why I was suggesting go black first. Then go to the what's called go to our quick selection tool and just select these areas in here. If we're selecting too much, Alt or Option, pull it back. Alt or Option, pull it back a little bit. This tool is learning. Now what do we do? Brush. Excellent. We can use the brush. All right, I'll go ahead and use the brush. Bring the brush a little bigger, a little softer edge. 
hit the B key for the brush first. Now we just paint in with white. Okay. Command D to get rid of the selection. It's brought up detail in there. It needs to happen more. It's not enough. If I take this layer and duplicate it, boom, it brightens it up more. That's a bit out of place now. Hmm? That's a bit too out of place now. Um, a little bit. But now, now we need to edit these sides, right? Because of the way I selected it was kind of uh, sloppy. All right, so you'll see these edges here, they kind of cut off. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit it with our brush. Just take away the effect where I don't want it. Okay, making my brush smaller, bring this back on over. And then edit the mask here. So editing the mask, hit the X key, I can take away the effect where I don't want it, right? So evidently this effect is happening on both layers. So go to the other layer, the other mask, pull that away, see? And we can control every aspect of this. Go to the next one above it. Okay. Control minus, bring it on down. Now we're seeing detail in here. Now, if you don't like it to be that bright, we can always bring the opacity down to control it, to get the best of both worlds. All right, now walk me through. We want to make the, the gravel here much darker. Walk me through it. Control J first All right. So how about if we control J, control J the original one? Because it has no mask attached to it. It'll be easier. So Command J and... Yes, you could control J the first one, but I want to do one be easier without the mask. All right, what do we do next? Find the uh, filter that we like. All right, find the blend mode that we like. So darken, multiply. Oh, look at that. That looks pretty good. Multiply. Yeah, difference. All right, let's go over down. Now this darker, darker linear burn is kind of nice. Let's keep that in mind. Um, these are the bright. It's going to brighten everything up. This is going to add contrast. Remember, it maintains your blacks and whites, but not your midtones. This is going to add contrast. Difference. <clears throat> difference is inversing, it's making it a negative. See that? Different effects. You'll learn how to use all these later, but um, but here I'm thinking probably the linear burn is going to work best. What do I do next? Excellent. Very good. A mask. Third icon from the left, add a mask. What do we do next? Inverse. Command I. What do we do next? Yeah, we can paint it on in with what color? White, because it's already black, that's blocking out the effects. Hit the X key and just slowly paint it in, see? Just remember, your walk and pin, go to your the fourth icon from the left when your brush is selected. Fourth icon from the left on your options bar. Make sure that your transfer is turned on. And for opacity and flow, pin pressure is applied to both. So you drop these down and grab pin pressure so you get this effect. That way you can use the pressure of your pin to apply the strength of your technique. Making sense? So I'm gonna get in a little close to the edge here. Give it a little more detail, especially back here. Now I'm thinking the stairways could probably use a little more, you know, a little more um, tone. So I'm gonna gently start to paint it. See that? Gently start to paint it in. Paint this in here. Is that making sense? So we applied um, 
brightness or the screen for the door, we apply it more of the, the darken or the multiply area to the ground. Now, if I want to increase contrast for the building itself, I may duplicate the layer again, bring it to the top, right? And I don't want to darken. That's not going to help. <clears throat> the screen might help a little bit with the building, I'm thinking. So let me go over to overlay and see what it does. That's a little bit too harsh. Yeah, these are going to be too harsh. I'm thinking I'm liking the screen better just to pull out some of that tone. Give it a mask. Okay. Inverse the mask. Command I. Now use my brush to paint in the effect where I want it. See? It doesn't have to be everywhere. Just where your eye tells you it needs a little more brightness. Is that making sense? So if I come over here... Hold the Option, the Alt key, and click on the eyeball in the original background. That will turn off the other ones to show you what you have before. And do it again. Alt or Option, click on the eyeball, and after. Before and after, before and after. So give that one a try. Open up this image, uh, which is in the blend mode, blend mode number 22. Okay, we're going to do another exercise. What I'd like you to do is to grab this image, which is blend modes number 26, this one here. And I want you to give me proper detail for the background, which is the highlights. And also bring up and give me some texture, proper detail in the foreground for this image. I'm not going to, I'm going to let you guys actually start working on this on your own at first. And then I will approach this afterwards as how you should really handle this. So, um, so select, uh, grab this image and edit it using your layer blend mode techniques we just did. And um, and, and, I'll, and I'll come around and watch everybody. Okay. So the question is, what I, what I mean by proper editing for the foreground? You look at the stone; it's kind of dark. It's in the shade. It's in the shadow. So I want you to bring up brightness foreground area up a little bit. This is the foreground, which, which, which is in the water area. The background is back here. Brighten the foreground, but also give us some texture. In addition, I want you to darken the background to bring out texture and details and the highlight streaks. Because this is way too bright back here. So what you were asking was for the foreground, you want us to add... Add brightness, but not so much that we remove the texture. That's right. So add brightness, but at the same time, make sure you maintain some contrast in there so that you maintain your texture detail. Okay. Um, and then for the background, it's so bright, but still there's a lot of detail in there. Bring it down. Bring it down richer. Make it deeper. Utilizing your layer blend modes technique. All right, so I threw a curve at you on this one. Okay, let me go get the image real quick that I asked you guys to use. Where's it at? Number 26. Number 26, okay. There it is, that one there. Okay, so this one I threw a little bit of a curve. Let's go ahead and close the other one out. Don't want to save it. All right, so I want to take... What I do when I'm working in Photoshop is I find the most effective way to edit something. And <clears throat> that requires that I use layers. So I wanted to see how you guys were going to approach this. And so far, no one's really broken this down into layers. It's there, you're trying to edit it using masking, which is fine. Now, what I would do is probably remove the background, put it on its own layer, and maintain the foreground and keep it on its own layer. So I'm going to come over here to my Quick Selection tool, which is going to allow me to select particular shapes. Okay. 
perfect. That's exactly what I want. Okay. It's got my sky pretty well. I'm going to place my foreground on its own layer. So I'm going to inverse my selection. Command I is the, is the shortcut for inverse, right? But to inverse a selection, you add the shift. Command Shift I. And that inverted the selection. Now we have the foreground selected. So I'm going to hit Command and Control J, and we've got the foreground on its own layer. Is everybody watching? Now I'm recording this, so you don't need to take notes. So now I've got the background. I suppose I can just go ahead and duplicate that anyway. And that's going to be my background layer. So here, I could probably use a layer blend mode. If I duplicate this, Command-J, and change the blend mode to something like screen, there we go. All done. All right? Very simple. Boom, boom, all done. And did I have to go in here and put painting in there with my brush and any of that? Which is what I saw everybody doing. So even from, your, from what you learn in your beginning class, using layers are very, very important. Now I've got the background, which is underneath this, right? So if I, the background's underneath this. So now what I can do, I can duplicate this, Command J, and do what? Apply, multiply. Boom, done. Right there. Well, almost done. The foreground is not really looking the way I really you know, envision it. Um, so down here, I can break this up into groups. How about, let's do this. I'm going to select these two. That's going to be my background, right? Or the foreground, I should say. Command G for group. And we're going to call this one foreground. Okay, so if I turn it off, oops, that's the background, my fault. I misnamed it. So background. Okay, background. That's my background. The foreground, put those in its own group. It's like the top two layers, command or control G for group. And that's going to be my foreground. Okay. Okay, so I've got them organized into groups. So I'm going to go to my foreground, and although I like what I have here, I might duplicate that again. There we go. That's more what I'm looking for. And now I need to give it some contrast. So if I duplicate it one more time, it's, it's in screen blend mode, but instead of a screen or normal, let's go and do the overlay. Let's see if any of these will work. Linear, there we go. That's pin light. Pin light might work. So if I before and after, it adds a little extra contrast to it. What about that one spot where it's like really black on the red one? Where? Up in here? This one's right. Right over here? Yeah. Okay. We can still deal with that. Right? Um, that's in the shade. That's in the shade anyway. That's in the shadow. If I. Let's go back to my background here. Select it. Go to my background group. See, that's before and after. I personally like this. Right? But if I duplicate it again, just to bring more detail up here, I'm not going to like it so much down in here. So that's too much. I, wanna, I may want to maintain this the way it is, but bring down the values for the upper layer. So I, that's when I'm going to give this a mask, Command-I, to get rid of the effect. Now, from here, a nice soft edge brush, right? A nice soft edge brush. Make it l larger. Now, notice, because I'm working on the background, I'm not going to touch the foreground, right? So I can make the br brush fairly large and start to paint in. Oops, I'm in the wrong Hit the B key for the brush tool. And see that? Just start to add in a little. Come to the top. And then a little more up here. So before, after, 
before or after that's actually getting a little closer okay before after before after now I'm gonna introduce to you something called adjustment layers so we've applied blend modes here and obviously we're kind of going as far as we can go with blend modes so we have you guys are probably used to working with levels right I'm going to introduce curves. So if I select this, it brings up in the properties menu the curves. Over here, it, it, it applies an adjustment layer called curves. It has a mask it's attached to it, and it has the actual adjustment just to its left. So when I click on it, the curves open up. 256 possible shades of gray we have in Photoshop. So all of these points on this line are 256 points on this line. Down the bottom is your, it's, your, it's the shades of gray, your potential 256 shades of gray that exists in your image. I can take these grays and make them brighter or make them darker. This is your medium line. So if I target this, put a dot in the middle, and bring it up, it brightens everything up. But noticing it's only brightening the background. Why? because I'm in the background group. If I want to darken the background, right, I can do so. Or flatten it out, go to my highlights, which is which sits right over your, your whites, absolute black to absolute white, bring those down. So the way it works is like this. If you want the blacks in this image to become this shade of gray, on the vertical edge, you take the black point, place it on that gray, and that's the color they become. As simple as that. So if I want the highlights to become this shade of gray right here, there's my highlight slider. Look at that, that horizontal line, place it on that shade of gray I wanted to become, and that's what they become. So this gives you all types of control. If I do an S curve, Make the brights brighter and make the darks darker. You get contrast. Is that making sense? All right. I'm a, I, if I want to get the points off here, click on the point and drag off. Click on the point and drag off. And that brings the curves back. So maybe you want to flatten this out a little bit like so, something like that so that your eye goes more to the foreground. You see how quick and easy that was? Mm -hmm. It's just kind of thinking about layers, two things in layers. Now, I'm going to um, give you another one. You're going to walk me through it. I'm going to get rid of this one. Command or close. Command uh, or Command W. And let's go grab this one. This should be an easy one for you. All right. I want to make the I like to attach my properties to the bottom here so it's easier. So what I want to do is edit both of these independently. The sky independently from my foreground, mountains. What do I do? Uh, duplicate layer. Excellent. Duplicate the layer. And then do what next? Uh, that quick selection tool, which I've already have targeted. Very good. Select the sky. Boom. Done. I'd rather put the mountains on their own layer, so what do I do? The excellent. Control, Shift, I. Inverse selection. What do I do next? What was that? I missed it on the top. Oh, sorry. So I just go back to my selection tool. It adds to it, so just, there you go. Done. So I want to put that on its own layer. What do I do? I don't need to do that. See right here? That's right. Control J. That automatically creates a new layer. You don't need to create a new layer. That's a step. But yes, we were going in that direction to create a new layer. All right. So there it is on its own, own, own layer, right? So if I turn off the bottom two, there it is. 
All right. If I go to the top one, that's the that's the clouds. So here, I probably let's say we duplicate the layer, and let's give this a screen. There we go. See, those two are screen. We go to this one here, and let's give that duplicate, duplicate that layer, and give this a multiply. Okay. That making sense? Okay. So break up your layers. So that, why don't we um uh, recording now? All right. So um, <clears throat> some good learning sites here. So I run a very large user group online. It's a Photoshop user group on, on, on Facebook. You're welcome to join that and, and post your work. That's one of my pieces that I was posting at, for, from a workshop I was doing. Um, but you come through here, there's all types of, you know, Photoshop techniques with layering um, that people use. Or now it's kind of the, the, the things, the, uh, uh, the, the Halloween season. So we start to get posts um, coming up, about, up, up for that. That's pretty interesting. Some of them are pretty interesting. Others are kind of gimmicky, you know, kind of. And you can make connections with these artists on here, too. Uh, another a place that's really nice is Twitch. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Twitch, twitch.tv. Um, but basically, it is originally a gaming. <clears throat> and I, I personally have a, a, a Twitch site here. It's Chrome Illusion. And I'll do a weekly Twitch broadcast. And these are some of the ones that I've, that I've had um, previously. You can come on here and watch this. Now, it's free to, to watch um, when, you're, when you're live. But then afterwards, you pay like four, four bucks to have access to all the content that your particular artist um, um, you know, is, um, is, is showing. So if I come over the videos here... I've got a bunch of videos on here, right, from my weekly broadcasts, and I was one of Adobe's presenters, so I was I was involved with Adobe Twitch, and these are the Adobe uh, broadcasts that I did for them. Um, and this, like I mentioned, so there's a lot more. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, go for it. Uh, if people have. Uh that's right. If you have Amazon Prime, you get you get a free subscription to Twitch. And if I, for example, if I want to go to photo, I want I want to look up Photoshop. If I, I think that's a keyword there. Here are all these little Photoshop presenters. They're currently on their live. Um, let's click on this one. And you can actually interact with them. Well, let's see. Yeah, she's live. Well, it looks like she's live. This one, um, I don't see people in the chat room here, so maybe this is just a recording playing. <clears throat> say nobody watching right now? Okay. And I can't see what she's doing. She's not like she's doing anything right now. And let's go back. I'll come up here. I'll type in. We'll say Photoshop. I mean, it could be music. It could be anything that you're interested in. So I typed in Photoshop. There we go. And these are, you know, Photoshop troll. I mean, um, let's see who's on right now. Let's, I'm going to go turn that one off. I don't know. That's his real face or not. Um, Dan, Dandy Dunn Arts. Let's go click on this one. And you can interact with them. Hey, look, see, here we go. Is somebody's on there now. Now, this looks like this may be um, Spanish. Yep, that's Spanish. So I don't speak Spanish, so I won't be interacting. That's the artist there. So if I come on, I usually, I usually would stream on Sundays. So if I come on, you can come on and actually interact with me. But I'll be creating stuff. Um, it's a it's a nice little way to learn. If um, 
you know, there's a if you're gonna do sculpting or ZBrush or Maya or stuff like that, you can come in there and watch these guys interact with them, ask them questions. They'll answer your questions. I, I find this to be a nice little learning tool. Um, another good learning tool is uh, it, you guys are familiar with Deviant Art? Yes. Yeah, Deviant Art's nice. Which one? The other variant of the Devil when you show off art. Oh, that's um. Oh darn it! What is the name of that? It's not Deviant Art. It's um. Oh gosh, where well, you can sell your work. You, you, you get up the site. You can sell your work. Get jobs. What is the name of the site? Oh my gosh, I can't. I'm, I'm forgetting. Yeah, you sure did in the first day class. Yeah, I sure did. Like that's article DeviantArt.com. Let's go over here real quick. Um, that is called, oh, my brain's a mush. I'll remember in just a moment. I was taking a little time to actually, uh, let's get out of there. Let's close that down. That's a little connection's a little slow today. Um, Demon Art's another one, and, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name. There's a couple of sites, actually. All right, we'll come back to this. Okay, so I've kind of tapped into the importance of using layers. Now I'm going to show you a more advanced way of placing your objects on their own layer. And we're going to do so using, um, you know, your channels. The key to mastering Photoshop it's mastering selections. Selections, channels, and masks are all the same thing. And let me share with you what I'm talking about. I'm going to open up this image. I'm in the compositing class folder for this one. Just keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up this file. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections, channels, and masks are exactly the same thing. So, selections. We know that we have selection tools to make any type of little selected area um, shape that we want. We have the merging ants, which is telling us that anything that we do in Photoshop can only be done inside the merging ants. Why is this important? Because Photoshop doesn't know what, when, where, or how we want to do anything in the program. We need to tell Photoshop what, when, where, and how. That is what this selection is for. Okay? So, now, say for example, I want to save this selection. So I want to bring it back later. Okay? Say I came in here with my lasso tool, hold the shift key, and I added more elements to this. So I worked really hard to get this right. Right? And then I'm going to hold the alt, alt key or option key and cut out a couple of eyes like that. So I worked really hard to get the selection. I want to save it. All right. Select menu. Save the selection. I'll just call it, leave it new by default. And click OK. Well, where did the selection go? That's right. It's in channels. There. If I bring it down here, there's my channel matching my marching ends. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections, channels, and masks are exactly the same thing. All right. So if I edit this channel, alpha channel, anything in an alpha channels, anything in, in, in addition to your color channels, I go to my brush, hit the B key for my brush, make my brush a little small, and let's see, let's paint some little, little squiggly things, maybe a little legs or something in here. It's kind of like walking right along here. Okay. Oh, I want to bring that back as a selection. I can go to my select menu. When menu why? Because it's going to modify a selection. Load the selection. Which one? Right? Alpha 1. Right? Then I click it and look. There's my selections. So selections, channels, and masks are exactly the same thing. All right. If we understand that concept, let's take it a, a, a step further. Command or Control D to deselect. 
And by the way, I am recording this, so you don't have to take notes. Just letting you know. I'm recording this. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start understanding how values can help us. I'm going to determine which one of these channels, which are now in black and white, is going to give me the best separation from the foreground to separate from the background. I'm going to target on the red channel. And I'm going to take a look at the values in here. Red, green, blue. Which one gives us the best separation from that background? Blue does, I agree. Red, green, and blue. Yes, blue does. So I'm going to duplicate this channel to make it an alpha channel. I do not want to work on the original blue channel because that's my color. Drag it, place it on top of the icon to the left side of the garbage can, will duplicate that channel. I don't need the alpha one, so I'm going to hit the garbage can to get rid of it. All right, now we've got blue copy. So this is where it gets really interesting. This is where we're going to start to utilize our layer blend modes. Okay, so with layer blend modes going, Blue copy is here. And I'm going to determine, I'm going to get this, this, this alpha channel. I'm going to blend it against itself. That's going to help me separate the original foreground content from the background. To do so, I'm going to select image menu, apply image. What the apply image command does it simply says, take an image from somewhere else or from itself and blend it in a particular way, utilizing a layer blend mode. I'm going to go apply image. And you notice it got darker a little bit there. Because by default, the blend mode being applied is multiply at 100%, as you can see here. I'm looking at this image and realizing that the multiply blend mode has brought down the, the values of this foreground content pretty well. It's done a pretty good job. My background, which is fairly white, is still fairly white. So I'm going to keep this result. So again, the goal here is to bring down the values of the foreground content and allow the background to stay bright white. We're creating a mask. All right, so I click OK. I'm not done. We do it again because the whites aren't as white as I want and the darker areas aren't as black as I want. So I'm going to go to Image Menu, Apply Image again. It applies to Multiply again. It did an even better job. All right, I'm going to click OK. Now, what I want to do now is make the whites brighter. I got pretty good tone especially darker values all through here. Let's bring it back up. Let's go to image menu, apply image. It reapplies the last blend mode that I that I had selected. But let's go down here and if I go to screen or color dodge, look what's happening here. Let me try out overlay. Overlay works even nice. See how overlay makes it richer? Overlay adds more contrast, making the whites whiter and the, and the, and the darks darker. There. That's even better. That's what I want. Vivid light. All right. The question is, is that too much contrast? We're creating a mask. One's going to be black. The other one's going to be white. Good question. We're not done. We're close. But... I want this white and I want this black. So let's go back to edit image menu, apply image again. It did a pretty good job again. All right. So these are blacker. This is definitely got whiter using vivid light mode. I'm going to do one more, but this time give it um, just brighten up the white. So apply image. That's not bad. Let's go to the screen. 
See how the whites get whiter? See how they're brightening up there? Color Dodge. Linear Dodge. Okay. Screen. I'm going to go for screen. Okay, not bad. So, let's do this one more time. Image. Oops, sorry. Image, apply image. Okay. And let's see what happens if I go to hard light. Overlay. Linear light. That works right there. Okay. That's clean. It's getting close. Oops. Command zero. Command plus. See? See that? See that? So the other areas here, this is where it gets really interesting, is I want to make, make sure that the blacks are blacker and the whites are whiter. If I take my brush, again, when I'm working in the mask mode, I'm only going to have two options here, black or white, because we're in a channel. It's grayscale. If I change the blend mode of the brush to overlay, this is where it gets very interesting. Watch. If the brush mode is in overlay, <clears throat> if I paint with white, it's only going to affect the white areas and not touch the blacks. If I paint with black, hit the X key, it'll only affect the darker areas and not touch the highlights. Come up to here, paint with white. It pulls it, makes it brighter. There's only so far you can go on this one. Now the rest of this, I want to be black. So, lasso tool, I'll lasso all this up here, all the way around and fill that with what color? White. With what? White. Black. All black. All black. You do know why. Okay. He's messing with me. So, <laughs> okay. So there's my mask. Okay. All right. So, I want the building selected and not the sky. So what do I do? What do I do, guys? I can do that. I can do one. If I copy this, I can say, let's invert this one. This, this will represent my city. Command or Control, I. Boom. Now I have the building selected. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Now, if that's true, I should be able to make a selection from this mask, right? How do I do it? Nope, not quick selection tool. No. Remember I went up here last time, select menu, load the selection, and go get the one I want? That's the long way. Want to know the short way? All right. Just because you're worthy. Hold the command, hold the control key down on your keyboard, and click and release right on this icon. Boom. There's my selection. The white. Okay, the question is that selects the white? Yes, why? Because white represents what's selected. Black represents what's not selected. White reveals, black conceals. But when we were, when we were making brushes on Mondays, yes. we were using black, which was the, uh, which, which, which white it was viewing in the mask. Yes, but that wasn't in the mask. That wasn't in the, yeah, it may not have been in the mask. I'm just wondering, like, why does it work differently? It's not working differently. I think he's confusing two things, two different things. Right. White, white, white will reveal what's going to be on your layer, and black is going to completely conceal it, make it transparent. 
So if that's true, that means I've just made a selection of this alpha channel, right? Now, go back to channels, click on the RGB composite. There's my selection. I want to mask out this whole image. Let me duplicate it first. I forgot to do that, all right? Now, when I apply a mask, your mask, remember, because selections and masks are the same thing, right? It's going to honor that selection. Watch what happens. Boom. Turn that off. Boom. Get in close. Clean. Completely clean. Look at that. In between there. Clean. 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 Messed that one up, but you guys get the point. All right. Well, if we want to bring it back, right? Just addressing the issue. Let's come bring it on back up to the top. What do we do? What was that? I can't hear you. Go into the mask and, and paint it. Be key with your brush. Bring it down and paint it with what color? There you go. Well, white. So we paint with white, making sure overlay is turned off. Go to normal mode and watch. It brings it back. Isn't that amazing? It's a non, it is a non-destructive editing workflow. It brings it back. We're editing the mask. I can turn off the mask, right? If I turn off the mask, it's shift click on the mask. Shift click on the mask, and that brings back all your sky, right? Shift click back on the mask, applies your mask. Now you can go get any sky you want and bring it in behind it and to replace your sky. So I want you to open this one up and you're going to use this technique for removing your, your buildings from the sky. And this one is located inside the compositing class folder. And it's called selections number 13. Okay, so this new image, you can see, I'm using you know, one of our students' um, um, results here. You can see that he's created this mask effectively. Um, he created his initial one, inversed it because he wanted the city to be on its own layer. And <clears throat> going back to layers here, he applied that mask to a city scene then created some clouds underneath it. So the clouds are a smart object, very good. Command T, um, I can come in here and you know resize this, hold the shift key, can kind of stretch it out, then change it a little bit. So get a little bit of interplay um, with uh, resizing of your clouds. But if you look right on the edge here, look at what's going on here. Look at that, okay? That's right. That's the old sky. So if I click off the mask, was well, partly those guys, partly chromatic aberration. All right. So hold on. We'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. So that's right. So the selection it didn't get crop in close enough to the building, and I'm going to show you how to deal with this. They right, it latched, but it, but it, but it latched onto the building, but it also didn't latch on enough, because this is part of the part of the sky back here. He's got red and, and chromatic aberration. Well, I'll, I'll explain that in just a little bit. But turn that off. You can see what happened. The selection stopped at the blue and stopped at the red when it really needed to come in tighter to the building. Okay, all right. Now. How to deal with this? Let's, 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 let's explain it this way. I'm going to make a new file. And we'll go 5 by 5 inch. Okay. Make a new layer. All eyes appear. Now, D key for the gradient tool. Well, G for the gradient, D for making this default black and white. Black for the foreground color, white. So, what I'm going to do is make up 256 shades of gray. Oops, wrong tool. 
G for gradient is what I meant to do. All right, there's my gradient. Absolute black, your 256 shades of gray until it becomes absolute white. Now, what can I do with this? Let's see. Command L for levels. Bring the levels right down here. And what we're seeing is a proportion or percentage of how grays are laid out. My black slider, mid-tones, and highlights. If I want to take the dark values to encroach on over to the medium gray, toward the medium gray and the white, I can go to the black slider and pull it on over. And now the blacks start to dominate the, the medium grays and start to encroach on over toward the whites. I can do the opposite. Go to the whites, the highlights, the brighter values, and have them encroach on over toward the medium range information and the blacks. Okay. I can go to the mid-tone and I can shift them left to right, left to right. Okay. You know what? I can tighten this up more. I want to make more of a thin line. Bring the blacks on over and bring the whites on over. Now I'm making this thin medium gray area where if I go to the medium gray, I can shift it in either direction. Watch this. Now I'm going to bring this over to here to a real thin line. See that? Click OK. Now, what if we want to get that, that gradient back? How do you think I would handle that? And don't say undo. Make another gradient. Make another gradient? No. I'll make another gradient from this. From the black and white of the sea, I want to make a, a gradient from this. Brush. Filter. Here blur. Gaussian blur. What is that doing on top of Merging the, uh, what does it look like it's doing? It's not merging pixels. It's, 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 it's smearing. Well, it's like taking pastels. You make a straight line. And you take your hand and you smudge it in either direction. That's what it's doing. It's adding blur. So it's breaking up the pixels in that thin area and spreading them out more into medium gray. So now if I go back to my levels, I have my mid-tones, my highlights, and shadows to play with again. And let's keep that in mind. Let's get rid of this. And let's go to his mask. Why do we have this highlight here? It's the result of this mask. Right? That mask is hard edge. Look at that edge. That's right. I'm going to add a feathering effect to the mask, mask to allow my to allow me the ability to shift my tones. So now I can go to filter blur, Gaussian blur, and I don't want that much of a blur. I want it just a little bit. See, just a little bit of blur. Then I'll go to my my levels and shift my tones. All right, let's see what it looks like if we do it from um, looking at the image. So click here. I'm on the mask. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur on the mask. Give it a little bit of a blur. See that soften up there? Okay. We'll click OK for now. Now, Command or Control L. I can take the blacks and then coach them on over, right? Or whites to do the vice versa, pulling it out. Or go to my midtones and shift it on in. See? I'm shift. I'm shifting the the mask around a little bit. Yeah, I'll give him a halo. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. There you go. Halo be gone. So there are other ways to handle it too. There is, if I undo this, by the way, and target the mask, um, if I target any of my selection tools, I can go to select the mask here. If we click it, this does something similar. I find it to be buggy and slow. Yeah, I find it to be the the be not as effective. Here's my feather <coughs> capability. If I get in close <coughs> and look at this, here's my feather. All right? Here's my see it feathered it just slightly. Here's my radius. It takes a little time for it to see. It takes a little time for it to to adjust. The way I just showed you is much faster and more direct. I've never really cared for select a mask to edit my edges. Okay, cancel. Now, select a mask is great for stuff like hair. I want to show you that too. You have a person with hair, and you really want to separate them from the background. You know, it's great for that. Um, but other the stuff like this, I don't care for. So yeah, I thought that would be very helpful. Okay, that'd be nice. Hmm? One more time? Yeah, I can do one. Let me do it to another image. I mean, if you do it right the first time, you shouldn't have to do a lot of this. It's just that he really worked so hard on his mask. He overworked so hard on his mask that it gave the mask, mask a really hard edge. <laughs> so, um, so if he was, let's see, maybe we should, we should do another image. Go away. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of work. <laughs> um, here is, I guess I can use that one. That would be an easier one. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe that one. Let me try some. Let's see if I look for another. This one could work, I think. All right, let's use this one. Okay, so this is a composite. Is that a big That's the composite. I have something I was playing around. You can see all my layers here. But what we'll do is, and then there's my sky underneath it. See, this is more of a composite. But let's say it's not a composite, okay? So I go to my drop menu, and I'm going to flatten the image. There. Not a composite anymore. So Command-J, put it on this on a new new um, layer, go to my channels and take a look at which one of these are going to separate. It's like the blue channel is going to work the best. All right, so red, green, blue. I think that'll work the best. If I duplicate the blue, all right, let's see what I can do with this one. Image, apply image. That's linear light. Let's go multiply is what you get by default. Let me try um, overlay. Yeah, this one's going to be a tough one because I have so much contrast in here that this is not going to be an ideal technique for this one. So, to me, the best way to handle something like this image adjustments. So I did image. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the one suggestion is use 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 your curves and levels. You could. You're still gonna have, you're gonna still have problems here. Yeah. So if I hit uh, you know Control M for curves, for instance, or Image Adjustment Curves. Right there. Okay. And just use the raw at raw capability of the curves. That could work. We kind of keep this down. It makes us, it makes us uh, starting down, and then you can uh, use other tools to get the sky. Yeah, if I can get it this close here, like so, it almost would be worth it. I mean, this this particular image is one of those where it's mostly blue at the sky, it's mostly yellow down the rock. Well, I'll just use my quick selection tool and just select it out like this, and do that, and be done with it.
where I inverse your selection like that. So this is one that this just works just fine. Just using your standard selection tools. Okay, but there are others which are going to be ideal for using that channel technique because all the information is in your channels already. So use them. Okay, let me see. Let me get another image. I think uh, probably use, let's use this one. I better we'll use, we'll use this one. Okay, now let's go to here. Let's look at our channels. One, two, three. All right, this one could work. Duplicate the channel, doing it again. Um, image, apply image. I want um, a multiply blend mode. Oh, let me see what overlay does. So overlay helps. That's not bad. I'm going to go to vivid light on this one because I'm going to come back and go to multiply. Multiply is going to affect the, the, the brighter areas less. It'll affect these other tonal areas quicker. So image menu, apply image. This time go to multiply there. Do it again. Image, apply image, multiply again. There we go. We're getting great results. Image, apply image. There it is. There. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to go back. Image, apply image. This time, go to something that's going to give me some contrast. Overlay. Hard light or vivid light works pretty good. Now, you can see where some of these areas I've, I've, I wasn't able to get. That's where you come into your brush and you can paint it. Right, I think I think you guys are getting the point. Okay, so just kind of, you know, this technique this technique is pretty good for some things, but not for everything. Um, even if you do something where a person is on the background with with hair, you want to select around with the hair. You got to make sure that background isn't a color that's going to affect your hair so much. It's going to be impossible to get it out. You know, like a solid color background would be ideal uh, for hair. Okay. All right. I want to show you another technique um, that, I, that I know you're going to love. It's on making a cloud brush utilizing the principles that you've already learned. I'm going to go to my clouds layer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a cloud and make a brush from it, okay? And let's kind of bring this smaller. Let me see what other options I've got here. All right, there we go. Let's do... Oh, I did like this class. Let's, just, let's use this cloud here. Let's open it up. Okay. Now, we're going to use the same principles of, of, of using layer blend modes to isolate this cloud and make it a brush. So all eyes up here. Command J. Go to my channels. Red, green, or blue. Yeah, probably the red on this one. Duplicate it. I'm going to isolate the clouds. Image. Apply image. We got multiply. Color burn. Linear burn. Let's see if we've got that. That's not bad there. A darker color. Let's see what overlay does. Hard light. Vivid light. Linear light. Hard mix. Okay. So what I'm going to do is probably go to something like, let's go to multiply. That's my first choice. Come back and let's do apply image. And this time, let's see what I can get with an overlay. 
soft light, hard light. All right, so I'm trying to get as close as I can. I'm going to come with the screen just to bring this up just slightly. I can go to the blend. I can go to the um, opacity percentage and apply lower opacities of that screen. Now, this is where it gets fun. B key for the brush. Okay. Right click. I'm going to grab that soft edge brush. Make sure my blend mode for this is in overlay. Paint with black. Oops. Paint with black. Paint with white. Now that's awfully. Let me do it here. That's awfully um, dark. I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little bit, get some more control. Okay. X key. That's too much. And what I want to do is go to backwards again. Hit it. X. Kind of back out of this. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. X key. Bring my opacity down a little bit. Okay. X key. Okay. Start to break that up. Okay. My system is freezing up just a little bit. Okay. I basically want to get the get the cloud here. Which I've got. So in the system, go. There it is, got it. L key for the lasso tool. Fill with the foreground color. And I'm going to just grab the rest of this. Fill with the foreground color. There we go. There's my clouds. Now, what color do brushes respond to? Go ahead. Black. Black. We want we want the one of the cloud brush, right? What do we do? Inverse that. Yep. Yeah, Command I. Inverse it. There's my cloud. Get it closer. Do a little bit more editing. What I'll probably do is uh, come here with the brush, white. Go target this. Here. Oh, overlay is on. That's what we want. Okay. And I'm going to bring up the opacity to 100% again. There we go. There it is. Get rid, rid of all this. Good. Bring the brush down a little smaller. That's what's happening. I'm not painting. I'm not. I'm not working with my pen. I'm working with somebody else's pen. Yeah. Okay, there we go. There's my cloud. Now, I could do a technique where I can go image, apply image. Okay. We got screen here. What if we go to overlay? There we go. It gets a little richer, deep. Give us some contrast. I like that hard light right about there. That'll do just fine. M key for the marquee tool. Select your clouds. That's going to be your brush. Edit menu, define the brush preset. There's my cloud. Okay. Let's go to the sky. Let's go find the. Uh, let's go get another 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 sky. I could. Um, we'll go ahead and grab this one. Open that up. I'm in a brush, as you can see here. Making a new layer. Sample the the white that's there, the tone that's there, with a cloud. Tap and release, and there's my clouds. All right, bring down this opacity if you need to to blend in more. You're welcome to do that. Bring it down, 
and there's your clouds. Okay, alt sample this tone. And we can do that with any brush. If I go back to Photoshop, let's see, let's grab, actually, this is a good one here, too. Let's open up this one. That's another good brush. So channels, red, green, blue. All right. I might be tempted to do this. There's my red. Duplicate the channel. Go to my lasso tool and say, um, Let's turn this off temporarily. Say that's the cloud we want. Grab it. Okay, go to my channels. Let's duplicate that red channel. There it is. Inverse the selection. Fill it with the background color, which is Control Alt Delete, just to kind of get things started here. Okay, and we can start playing with this with, 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 with your colors. Now I can come over here and let's go to my image, apply image. I'm gonna there we go. I want to add a little extra contrast to a little bit of hard light. That's too much contrast. Probably a little soft light could work. I think that'd be a little better. Go to my brush tool. Right click, get my soft edge brush. Overlay is selected already. X and start to kind of outline these areas. It's going to have a tendency to avoid the white areas right there. Hit the X. Alt. Okay, and that can be your cloud. And a little softness in here. Okay, Command I, there's your brush there. I'm seeing a little bit of gray out here. All right, just get rid of it. Overlay is still turned on, so I have a tendency to get rid of the whites and not touch the darker values. Okay. Once you have your brush, select it. Brush preset. There it is. All right. Go to the image. Command D. Okay. I like to do all my painting on the separate layer. Sample that tone. There it is. So imagine you're going to have like a whole bunch of these cloud brushes. You're going to maybe they made 30, 40, 50 different cloud brushes that you can use to just tap into your background. So if I wanted to change this background here, for instance, Let's select here that water, put it on its own layer, for instance. Wrong layer, Command J. There it is. Let's turn these off for now. Let's turn off the background. There's my water. But I'm going to use this to get the color that I want, the gradient color that I want. So, eyedropper, target the top, that selects the top area. Hold the Alt or Option key, target the bottom gradient, blue, like so, and make a new gradient on its own layer. So make a brand new layer. Hit the G key for gradient. Foreground to background. So start at the foreground up here, end at the background down here, and release. put the sky underneath the water there now I can turn on my brush clouds there I can brush the clouds however I want in here okay and then later on we're gonna start getting to and compositing 
making. Uh, remember the smoke brush you made the other day? On 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 Monday, you made the smoke brush. That's ideal. Let's see, B key here. Right click. Ideal for a smoke brush now. So go grab the smoke. Okay, and maybe what we want, we're gonna make this like haze, atmospheric haze. So foreground color is gonna be kind of a little brighter. Background color is gonna be the same color as kind of the the color temperature of the overall piece. Make a brand new layer above it all, right? And then just gently, oops, see that's too much. I'm gonna bring my opacity down a little bit. Uh, undo. Right. So bring the brush down smaller. Okay, I got overlay turned on. Go to normal. There we go. Make it larger a little bit. All right. Start to create that haze back there. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm in the wrong layer. That shouldn't have happened. All right. Let me start creating that haze back there to create depth. We will talk about stuff like this later as we start to go into creating concept pieces and bring them together. Okay, so um, I'll give you a homework assignment. I'm going to put what I'd like you to do, and I'm going to put the assignment onto the server, is create. I want you to create a composite. Of your choice. I'm going to let you do what you want this time. So I'm going to let you create a composite of your choice on a minimum of 10 different images utilizing the techniques that you learn in terms of placing your, your individual objects on their own layer. So we take a fire hydrant from one, maybe you can use the, um, uh, the channel technique for isolating it. Okay, put them on their own separate layers. Okay, and then use utilize brush, brushes to composite them in using la using your 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 layer not layer blend modes but your um um your layer masking. Did you say none? Hmm? Did you say none? Composite them in. Did I hear you wrong? Ten. Oh, okay, I heard you wrong. No, you weren't listening to me. <laughs> ten. A minimum of ten. Where is it heard none? A minimum of ten. Create a composite minimum of ten different images. I got that. Now. Okay, so. Alter them so that the lighting looks right. They look like they all belong, like, like you took a single camera and you shot it in the scene. You can even go photograph for this if you want to. So you can go photograph a, a landscape area and then maybe a barn somewhere else and you want to you know, bring it in a composite. So utilizing your, 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 your layer, your layer, um, um, your um, adjustment, what was that? Yeah, your layer masking. To blend things in. Yeah, the background can be counted as one image. So you have a background as one image, and then you you start to add things to it on top. So you can take a dog out of one image and, and, and take it out, you know, composite it in such a way so that the layer masking masks out the dog. Only the dog is there. Put them into the into the main image in its own separate layers. Do not merge them. I want to see all your different layers. Okay. Hello. We're getting ready to leave. Huh? We're all done. Oh, you're done? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thinking that is. So I'll put an assignment sheet up there, and uh, it's, it's going to require you to have so many different images, and make and uh, and to make sure that perspective is correct. So anything in the foreground is going to be closer. Anything in the background is going to be bigger. Utilize your um, uh, your your um, smart objects for that. So all your layers have, should be a smart object. So you can always resize them anytime you want. Um, 
Because yes. not everybody took uh, basic Photoshop. Yep. You should probably go into copy editor. Okay. So, so the comment say I should probably go into copyright. So, I was counting on you guys to use your own images, so you don't have to worry about copyright. However, if you absolutely cannot find your own images, watch me up here. She is not watching me. <laughs> All right, so if you absolutely don't have images, there is a site. I think that I, I might have put it on the, well, I'll have it on your sign machine. It's called textures.com, www.textures.com. Per day. Well, no, it's more than three. It depends on the size. But you can get anything off here you need. For example, if I go to skyscraper I wanted some buildings to, to be part of my composite 330 different images so you're limited on how many you can download per day and that's why I'm saying you know you can you you can utilize some of this where's my skyscrapers I just can skyscrapers go find it thank you there they are okay 337 textures Textures.com is is wonderful. You just scroll down and you just grab what you want. All right? Like if you want to, you know, you can do a sci-fi scene if you want to. Bird, you know, it's it's or you can do something fantasy like. Nice stuff back here. Okay? You may want to utilize that as a background. But think about trying to tell a story with your with your piece as well. Don't just throw things together. So you need to call it a Yeah, oh, one okay. file with ten different images in their own layer. Ten different. No, you're you're gonna get more than ten different layers because you're gonna be adding other stuff in there to make to make your make your scene work. But a minimum of ten different images. So, um, say for example, you want uh, a picture. You can't find a picture of a, of a dog or something, or birds. Let's just say birds. You want to add some birds as part of your scene, flying around in your art scene. So birds, there they are. Got flying birds, sitting birds, and I know it's, there's some in here that are flocks of birds as well. Okay. Um, ground. If you want to, you want to change your foreground to something else. You know, concrete. So take a look at that. You know, check those out. But I prefer you use your own images. Look, look in your own stockpile images, or go out and shoot for it. All right, shoot to composite. That's what I'm going to name this assignment. I'm going to call the assignment Shoot to Composite. Okay? Any questions? Yes. Yeah. How do I save? Okay. You save this as either a PSD or a TIFF file format with the layers intact. Do not merge this. Do not give me a JPEG. JPEGs won't save layers. TIFF or PSD. No, bring it to bring it to class on thumb drive. What time is it due? What time is it due? Uh, it'll be due next uh, Thursday. Next Wednesday. Wednesday. All right, so I'll give you some time in class on Monday to work on it together where I'm here to help you. And then on Wednesday is due. So we we'll have Monday to continue. Yeah, Monday to kind of do it. Do not wait to Monday. I, I'm looking at your eyes. Oh, I got more time. And you're all excited. You don't have any time. Get all your images together, all your shooting done by the weekend. Get your concept going before Monday. 
Get it going before Monday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like I saw that look in your eyes, like, oh, this is gonna be great. I get more time. No, you don't. <laughs> this is gonna fly. In the real world, you get no time. I mean, they will give you literally probably no time to do this. All right, shoot to composite. I'll have the assignment sheet up on that weekend before the weekend, and and uh, watch this video also. All right, I'm gonna stop.